Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be breaking down The Lost City. Again, just got back from watching it. Did a typical thing, I'll give you my plot synopsis. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I'll give you my overall grade. I'll try to go again scene by scene, best I can remember. Talk about any major themes. Similar movies, question mark, probably not. But we have a powerhouse cast. We have Loretta Sage, played by Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock, 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 probably, I don't know. Alan is uh, Channing Tatum, who's is also Dash, who's the character of Loretta's book. We have Abigail Fairfax, who's a dude, who's kind of like the rich, evil villain guy. Don't know who, didn't recognize that character, that actor. We have Jack Trainer, who is like a military guy. He's an actual, he's an actual physical trainer. His name is Jack Trainer, played by Brad Pitt. We have Allison, an assistant to Loretta Sage. Oscar, who's like a, it's like a pilot. We have Beth Hatton, who's the first assi assistant to Loretta Sage. Loretta Sage is a book writer, a successful book writer, and she's she's about to start a new book tour. And we have Julian and Raffi, some henchmen of uh, Abigail Fairfox. So, movie starts out, Loretta Sage, from the trailer, she's in her, drinking her Chardonnay in the, in the bathtub. She has a late husband named John, I believe. He's either getting just, there's no characterization to him at all. But just, she's like a, she's a writer. She went to, I don't know, went to college for like, like, something educational. But she's a insecure, fearful writer that had some success writing novel, romance novels, because her academic research wasn't getting published. She's had a bunch of successful stories in love romance type of deal, and now her her Beth Patton, her mate, her first assistant, her publishing representative, something is trying to get Loretta to finish her her next book and go on a book tour. Loretta's just kind of again really insecure, just like fearful, sad, you know, loathing, wah 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 wah, and. And, and to do so, her cover model, Alan, is, and he's been the cover model, just a, literally a picture for the, the front of her book um, for like the past 20 books or so. And so, first scenes is again Loretta like deleting, deleting the, the plot line, sitting in her, in her bathtub, getting calls from Beth, and then she goes on stage to, to begin the book tour to promote the book with Alan. Loretta's up there, she's reminded not to say anything too, too academic, too boring. Again, she's a, she's a sapiosexual. It's people who are attracted to intelligence, which, Sandra, Sandra, if you're out there, I'm, I'm pretty intelligent, allegedly, sometimes. <laughs> but uh, they're up on stage, and Alan Dash, Channing Tatum, you know, he's the, he's, his characterization's kind of like the, the nice, genuine dude, kind of silly, kind of dumb, but but good, well intended, but just a, a good looking person. And so he comes out, he's dancing, he's all excited. Loretta's just like, no, nah, she doesn't want to be at this place at all. Beth is like, no, you can do it, you can do it, go out there, you can do it. And so they're just like, again, promoting the book, talking about the book. And the audience, what do they want to see? They want to see Dash rip his shirt off. And so he, Alan says, no, I'm not going to do that, not going to do that. And then they were like, okay, any questions for Loretta? Chick raises her hand, can Loretta rip Dash's shirt off? And Loretta's not having it, but she's like, all right, F it, whatever, let's go. So she goes to rip off Alan's shirt, like falls off the stage. Her watch gets caught in his hair, turns out to be a wig. And so you get his long blonde hair at the beginning. And then his head falls off the stage as Loretta's trying to rip off his shirt and reveals that he has, he has a wig on. And so they finish up like the book promotion. They go out into the lobby. Uh, Loretta's wearing this this sequenced, bedazzled onesie, pink onesie from the previews that, that Beth really wanted her to wear for a whopping two whole hours. But the book thing finishes up. You get another scene from previews where it's you know Loretta talking to well-intentioned kind of aloof Alan that he's not actually Dash and Dash is a made-up character in her book. And then some chick runs over and says, like, oh, it's Dash, takes a picture with him. She's all over it, goes outside, kicks over the, the trash can from the previews, and then she calls her car. 
And then so her car comes to pick her up, and it turns out that it's not her car. It's Julian and Raffi, the henchmen of Abigail Fairfox, is pretty much waiting for Loretta to call her car. They pull the dummy car. Loretta gets in. She's getting kidnapped. They drive off. Alan sees that happen, and it's like another car comes up right after Loretta gets in the first one, and it's, are you Loretta? Who's Loretta? And it's like, oh, no, that's when, that's when Alan realizes that she's been kidnapped, and the, 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 the cab driver says he's not going to uh, fall for another handsome face or something and drives away. He won't let Alan get in the car to follow him. So, basically, Alan, Allison, the second assistant of Loretta, and Beth, they all realize that she's been kidnapped. They're talking to the cops. They, they don't believe her. Like, they have to wait 24 hours to report missing persons or something. But Loretta gets taken to this big, like, charcuterie board. Uh, it's like the, your, your cheese. But Abigail, Abigail the, the dude, he's, a, he's part of a very wealthy family. His father had an extremely wealthy company, and he gifted it. The father gave the company to his younger brother. So Abigail's big stick in the whole movie, his motivations are, you know, he wants something that nobody else has that is completely his, that is completely his discovery. He's, extra, again, in fact, again, insanely wealthy himself, but he wants to, you know, make his own mark on the world, find something great. And so he basically asks Loretta that, so the book that she wrote is called The Lost City of D, and as they pointed out at the, at the book club, it was not for Dick. But that's, that's the first thought I had. So they, they point that out in the movie as well. But it's for some old, ancient uh, civilization. And so Ab Abigail has bought this island where the lost city is supposed to be. Again, the book Loretta has written is fictional. But again, she was an academic before. So she's writing a fictional book about either a rumor or just some researched thing about some, some lost people. And so fictional book about a, a, a real place. Abigail Fairfox has bought the island. It's on an active volcano. He's been doing a lot of excavating, trying to find it, the thing he's looking for. I think it's called like the some some headdress, the headdress of fire, something of fire, crown of fire. But he thinks is again just very valuable, or again just a, a really well rumored or well known about a treasure hunt. And so he, he inquires with Loretta about you know, helping him find it, and she's just like not having any of it now. And again, the Shakuta board is fucking humongous. It's literally like, you know, maybe like a 50 person office table, just with cheese and crackers all over it. So she says no. So uh, Abigail, the henchmen, uh, chloroform Loretta, they get on his plane. She wakes up on the plane, get another preview scene of, you know, get me out of here. Don't, don't, don't handcuff me. And it's her, her plane seatbelts holding her back. But they're on a private jet going to going to the location, and so they get there. Um, Abigail basically like zip ties her to a uh, to a chair, and it's like you know translate this. And the interest, in the her old research study that she had done with her husband was in the language, and then they have some scrap of wood that he needs to translate to find exactly where the headdress is at, or where the, where the burial site is at. So then you get, again, Alan is kind of a loof, well-intentioned dude. He's going to go prove to Loretta that he's not just a cover model, and he's going to go save her. And so, again, the cops are not taking them seriously about the reporting a missing person. So Al Alan, Allison, and Beth are like, does anybody know anyone with military background? They do. It's some guy from Alan's meditation camp, Jack Trainer, who's an actual physical trainer but with some military background, Brad Pitt. So Jack Trainer is like, Alan, you know, track her, track her GPS on her, on her watch, find out where she lands, and meet me there. So I, I think it's, the actual movie was filmed in the Dominican Republic, but just some, some Central America, South America, Spanish-speaking location. And so they do that. Again, Loretta's sitting there trying to translate, doesn't really, doesn't, doesn't have enough uh, like information to, to, to get, it's something about, you know, Endless tears is basically what she tells uh, Abigail. Abigail's like, this is not good enough. I need to know a location. And so that's kind of where she's at. Jack is going to go rescue Ab or, uh, Loretta himself, but Alan wants to come along. Again, Jack's got this. Alan, once he gets off the plane, he thinks Jack has this big truck, but it's just that little blue car from the previews. And they go to the location. Jack and Alan have some 
and they're not trying to kill people, but the, the henchmen of Abigail will kill them. So they break into the compound where everybody's at, and Abigail has a big operation going. He's excavating, doing a dig site of, of a whole island. And so a Alan and uh, Jack, Jack's doing all the work, beating up all the dudes, securing all of the, the or neutralizing all of the threats, and Alan's doing some karate chops. They get to Loretta, and she, she, again, she's zip-tied. Jack's going to get her out of there. And again, that's the preview scene of Jack aggressively spreading uh, Loretta's legs. And he's going he's gonna to go, he's just gonna rescue her. And then Alan, who's, who's kind of throughout the movie, secretly got a crush on Loretta, as well as trying to prove himself to her. He's not, he's like, you know, he, she doesn't need saving in there. Again, Sandra, if you need saving in there, I nominate myself as tribute. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't have time to get her out of the chair, so they put her in the wheelbarrow. That's what you get. That's what you see in the preview. And they get her out, and now they're running away, and they're back at the car talking about what they're going to do. And then, wham! Out of nowhere, Jack Trader's head gets blown off. And so Alan gets gets the blood splatter, but it's Abigail Fairfax, Fairfax, his henchmen tracking him down. I think it was Julian, the dude with the mustache, white dude with the mustache wax uh, Jack so he's dead and then you know they're under fire Alan and this is a comedy movie, comedy action movie so Alan and Loretta Loretta throws out on a gun he ducks <laughs> but they both get in the car and they drive away the the car flings around he almost almost flies off a cliff looks in the back of the car uh, Loretta's not in there he thinks he, she flew off the cliff but she's still in, the, in, in like the middle of the road stuck in the chair so it gets her, gets her out, of the, out of the car, and then they go to get back in the car and get another preview scene. They open the handle, or pull on the car handle, literally right on a cliff edge, and it falls off the cliff. And so, I'm not, I'm not sure where they, like physically where they go from there. I think they go down where the, yeah, the same spot where like the hill the, the car is climbed down, and the, the henchmen of Abigail are tracking them. And so now to lose them, they go into the water, and then they go down this river, and again, Loretta still has her uh, pink onesie on, and that's when Alan gets all of the leeches on his body, on his lower back and his butt from, from, the, uh, from the previews. Loretta takes off the, the leeches. She's got to check the front to make sure there's no, no more leeches, and so there's a scene. You know, she's, she's down here. Uh, Alan's standing up naked, turns around, and it seems like Loretta is pretty impressed with the meat that she sees. And so that is a scene there, but right then, at the same time they're getting out of the water, Loretta sees, the, again, she's got like this, the thing she was supposed to translate at Abigail's compound, like tucked away in her bra, and she sees like more of the writing at the bottom of, of this, this uh, mountain. And she sees that it's like, again, gives her some more clues about, again, endless tears, but just more clues for translation about where the, where the burial site is. And so they, uh, I'm not exactly sure what happens next, but oh they, oh, they have to climb up the mountain. The henchmen start coming through the water as well, and so the only way they can go is up and climb on top of the mountain. So then they climb up the mountain, where I get scared really close to the top, and again, that's another scene I'm very je jealous of Channing Tatum. That's the preview scene where he's using his head to help boost Loretta Sage up the mountain, right, right in her butt, so I was like, oh, nice. Nice, I'm pretty jealous of that scene. Bit, bit, if you can't tell, big Sandra Bullock fan. I had to, I had to re watch The Blind Side the other day, I had to readjust myself quite a bit. <laughs> but, so they get on top of the mountain, and they, they has a, Alan has eczema. So he had a real bad eczema outbreak from swimming in the water. Loretta's getting a fire going using some flammable liquids. It's the eucalyptus oil Alan uses to cure his eczema. He, they bust out a hammock to go to sleep, and it, Loretta says there's probably room for two, so they kind of snuggle up and go to sleep and then wake up. In the morning, Loretta gets out of the hammock and is kind of re-looking at the, the little translation sheet, which Alan sees. At that point, Loretta tells Alan what's going on about, like, she might know where the thing's at or whatever. And so after that, they... I think they go to another, like another town, and they like, report what's going on. And so then Loretta changes out of the onesie, gets into like a little red dress, comes out, 
sees Alan dancing with an older lady. The older lady says, dance with your husband. And Loretta's like, oh, no, not my husband. Loretta and Alan dance for a little bit. And, you know, again, Alan has, definitely has a crush on Loretta. Loretta's just kind of insecure and stuck in the past and, you know, just, just stagnated, like, like everything in this society. <laughs> but they dance for a little bit, and then after that, Loretta uh, comes back from just somewhere, just in a little restaurant, courtyard type of deal, little Spanish village, little somewhere in Central Latin America. And Julia and his henchmen are sitting there. Somebody in the town had told uh, Abigail what, what, what was going on. So they reported Loretta and Alan report to the police. It's not the police. And so Loretta gets taken again. Alan sees that. He gives some dude his watch for a broken down scooter. They're in this like m like military type transport van. It's got a it's got a wet bar in it, which Abigail makes sure to point out. And so they're driving down the road, and then uh, Alan Alan's coming back to 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 save her. And in an earlier scene, Abigail had said whoever had taken out who had evaded all of the henchmen had has to be extremely extremely trained. And he's extremely not trained. But but Loretta tries to hype that up again, and there's a little fight out. Uh, Loretta tries like fake seduces some of the dudes, pours some alcohol over the place. So they got one of the Julian smoking a cigar and drops the cigar. It lights the lights the the alcohol on fire, and you have a chaotic kind of like fight scene. Uh, Alan gets up on the top of like the military transport vehicle has a fight out with some dude, but they, 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 they capture him. Again, they're shooting at Alan before this, but they, they capture him, so they're not going to kill him now. And so they both have Alan and Loretta back in captivity. And so they go from there. Uh, I, think, I, I think Loretta tells them the actual location or something, but they get in a boat. They go to, the, to this cave, and they have to, like, shimmy through this really, just like this really narrow channel, not channel, just section of rock where it's just like a little cave if you like people actually go caving i mean a real you have to lay down and shimmy your way through loretta goes through well before that uh julian gets knocked off like and they're walking again another national treasure like scene you know walking down the in, in national treasure the the crickety planks and one of the henchmen falls through julian alan almost trips i have to jump over a little thing alan almost trips and falls down to, which julian who wants to kill alan's like haha watch your step Right after that, he falls in. Julian falls into the cliff and dies. And Abigail's like, "We're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to rescue him." Again, another just abyss, just seventy stories of blackness. You can't see where he goes. But they get to this little cave. They shimmy through. At Loretta goes first, then Alan. Which plot, plot, in, inconsistent plot there. If I was Loretta and Alan, again, again, it's comedy action on actual action, but. It would be very easy to wait on the other side of the henchmen and Abigail to call him through his whack him with a rock or something. And so, he, well, you could easily easily get out of being captive in that scene just by waiting for them to shimmy through and whacking them. <laughs> but all three, again, Julian's dead, Raffi's the last one, Loretta, Alan, Raffi, and Abigail, or they find the city, they find the tomb. Uh, Ab or Abigail opens the tomb and realizes the, the headdress or the crown of fire that he's looking for for his great, great history legacy remembrance is a, is a love story. It's basically one of the, again, some ancient language name, the man and wife, man and woman, it's courtship. She's, she's collecting rare red shells and giving, or he's collecting rare red shells, giving it to her as, as like a headdress, and it's not really anything valuable. So Abigail is very, very furious about this, tells Alan and Loretta to get into the uh, coffin and die. Yeah, at this point, the, the volcano is erupting, so they have to get out of there. Raffi's not excited about killing people. Again, Julian was the one who sniped Jack Trainer, but again, like I said, it's PG-13. It's not like a super violent movie in any way. But Raffi's not down with, with the bodies and not, or killing Loretta and Alan. So Abigail tells help, and Raffi push the, the, the stone, big stone slab back over the coffin. Loretta and Alan... You know, like, oh, we're gonna die. And then, you know, they talk to each other a little bit. They have some, some good conversation. But Raffi drops in a crowbar so that they can get out. And so, uh, Raffi and Alan, or and Abigail, they shimmy back through the little cave. 
Rafi is not happy about what he did, what Abigail did to Loretta and Alan, so he gets on the boat that they came in and, 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 and zooms away, basically abandoning Abigail. And so Abigail stuck outside of the cave. Uh, Loretta and Alan, they get the crowbar off, and then they see another current. The, the, the cave shimmy area it, it gets, gets knocked off, like the, the rocks are falling down, so it, it, the cave collapse. So they see another current through the water. They jump in the water, swim out back into the ocean. This whole time, Beth is trying to get to them, the, the maiden first assistant. She has a scene, again, like going up to police, telling them, you know, we need, well, first, she needs to get to the place. And that's when you meet Oscar, who's Oscar Nunez, I believe his last name, but Oscar from The Office. And so Beth and Oscar is just like this, you know, laid back, Spanish-speaking pilot, cargo plane pilot. So he agrees to fly Beth to, to the, the island, the location where the smart watch led him. And there's like a little goat scene. Beth's not too happy about the goat. It, and and Oscar's, Oscar's flying the plane on autopilot. But they get to the location. Then Beth, Beth has another scene where she goes up to the police officers. They're playing dominoes. And she's like, you know, I need to find, I need to find my friend and, and her cover model. So that then Beth and two police, actual police officers go out on this big vessel looking for the, where the ping location of the of the watch was and so they get there they see Abigail waving his hands like help me help me I'm stranded and then he gets on the boat and then Beth and the other two police officers and Abigail are on the boat and then they see Loretta and Alan swim up from the undercurrent of escaping the cave Loretta and Alan are like look look Abigail's the, he's the bad guy he's the one that kidnapped us so the cops arrest him it's kind of last you see of Abigail and then Kind of the final ending, final scene is pretty much Loretta, Alan, Beth, uh, Al, or Beth's grandma, who I guess is blind. They're reading a new book. It's called, I forget, Crown of Fire Behind, but basically just a, a, a love romance story about Loretta, who's, who's now moving on from her late husband, and Alan falling in love from their experiences. Any, any, uh, and examples of not being Dash. So Loretta has now got a new motivation to write a book. It's more of a true love romance story with Alan. You know, they have some Latin phrase they said, I don't remember, but and they, they kind of kiss and, and the camera pans out. So that's really the end of it, um, as best as I can remember. So overall, entertainment value, uh, I'll give it a B minus. I would even drop it down to a C plus. Comedy, you know, the two, two genres of movies that don't really, sh that take a lot for me to like, like, like really enjoy, be really entertained, are comedy and horror. Just a lot of the one-liner stuff. It just doesn't flow for me a lot of the times. So, I think it's a C plus. Uh, it's all right, nothing super great. Again, big powerhouse cast, big fan of Brad Pitt, uh, Channing Tatum, and certainly Sandra Bullock. But so, C plus for the overall thing. Major themes, Sandra Bullock, nice. Really, really like that major theme. A lot, a lot of jealous scenes uh, of, of, about, uh, about Channing Tatum in that one. <laughs> but again, similar movies, not really much. But again, like, like action movies, like just, just to be more serious. Comedy movies, just to be like, again, one or two extremely funny scenes or something that really gets me. But like a lot of one line, a lot of the writing. Again, pretty, pretty good with language, and I can actually predict it, so it's not like this doesn't strike me as anything. So, C plus overall. So, go recommend you go watch it. I certainly enjoyed it enough, um, but that is my review for the Lost City movie. Thanks for watching.